I don't know what it is about poppies, but they have got to be one of my favourite flowers. I was driving home one day and uh, going through the country. Through a gate I spotted a few little red specks, stopped the car, grabbed the camera, ran into the field and lo and behold there were one or two little red specks which were poppies. Thought fantastic. So uh, got uh, the camera set on the aperture so I could throw the background out of focus. Managed to actually catch, I'm not sure if it's a hoverfly or sort of a hornet, whatever it is coming into this poppy here. And with the aperture set the background out of focus here it was actually blowing quite strong but uh, managed to capture this poppy head here sort of moving around so a nice little bit of movement as well and I thought yeah what a great shot but what if I wanted to add just a bit more color and a bit more depth to the tones well that's what we're gonna have a look at doing plus we're also gonna have a look at sort of just toning down some of the highlights that we've got in this picture to make a start, we're going to use Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer. We're then going to go to Filter, we're going to drop down to Blur, we're going to go to Gaussian Blur, we're going to click on this and we're going to blur it, not by that amount because that would be totally silly. We're going to drop it down to a more sensible region, something like that there would be pretty good. We're going to click on that. OK, for the next stage we're dropping down to this icon here. This is an adjustment layer clicking on this it's off the screen but I'm going for hue saturation now when the hue saturation opens we're going to go straight to saturation and we're going to be ever so gentle and whack it all the way up to ooh, something like that there and you've got some weird and lovely colors coming through there but what we need to do while we're on this panel is drop down to this icon here this half black half white one looks a bit like a paper clip it's going to clip it to the layer immediately below it so let's do that Let's see what that actually does. You'll notice this little bent arrow showing that this adjustment layer is clipped to the layer underneath it. In other words, if I switch this off, you can see the hue saturation doesn't affect our background layer. Let's unclip it because the other way that you can clip and unclip is by pressing the Alt or the Option key. There it is with the Alt or the Option. If I unclip it, it's now unclipped. If I switch this off, you'll notice the colors affecting the background layer there as well. Switching this back on, if I press the Alt or the Option key again, you get that little symbol, that paper clip. That has now clipped it to the layer underneath. Brilliant, or what? Right, let's come to layer 1 here. This is the layer we blurred. Let's change the blend mode to something like soft lights. That looks pretty good. You've got some really great colors, really great tones going on there. A little bit dark. Now, sometimes in Photoshop, you've got to go backwards to go forwards. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go to the background layer. We're going to use Command J, Control J again. So we've now put in a new layer, a new background copy. We're going to go to Enhance. We're going to drop down to Adjust Lighting. We're going to go to Shadow and Highlights. Now, because the layer immediately above it is actually on a blend mode of soft lights, we can see through it. This allows us to bring through the detail using the shadow and the highlights. Now the shadows here, the light and shadows, you can see the way we can take it right up. You can do something a little bit in the high key industry there, or dropping it down. It was a, it was backlit. You can see the sun is actually coming in from this direction here. So I'm just going to drop that down a little bit. The darkened highlights, that's what I'm mainly interested in. As I bring this in, you'll notice the spots around here and the highlights in this area just drop down a little bit and become a little less intrusive. It's the highlights that actually begin to grab your attention after a while and that's what I want to remove. I want to keep the, the emphasis on this picture firmly placed on the poppy itself. Midtone contrast is just a great way of sort of, you can see the contrast that we can add with that. Something in that area there looks pretty good. Just try this a little bit more. Switching is on and off, that's the before, that's the after. Clicking OK. Right, something else we can do. This is adjustable, by the way. You can see that's the soft lights. This is what's enabling us to see through to the layer underneath. You can always come to the opacity. You can drop it down a little bit as well. So if I just want to bring back a little, wee bit more, just drop down the opacity, and there it is. Now, to finish off a picture like this, we're going to click on the top layer of the layer stack. We're going to come across, we're going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool, that's this one here. Dragging it across the image and you're thinking, I know what he's going to do, he's going to do a vignette again. Yeah, I like my vignettes. <laughs> I think it's a great way of actually holding the attention on the subject. There it is, we've actually sort of uh, created 
an elliptical vignette around there, or elliptical selection, should I say, at this stage. Dropping down again to the adjustment layer. Once again, I'm going to the hue saturation, but this time we're going to come to the lightness slider. Now, if we move it this way, you brighten it up. If you move it this way, you bring it down, and it now looks like there's a shadow of a rugby ball which is about to land on the poppy and the poor hoverfly. But don't worry, we can correct it. Just dropping this down a little bit more to that area. Looks pretty good. Right, coming to the Layers tab. This is what it's like so far. Now, making sure we're on the mask itself, now using Command-I or Control-I, we can invert it. Now we've got the dark around the outside, it's light on the inside. We're going to come to Filter, Blur, once again going to Gaussian Blur, and this time taking it up higher to that sort of area like that. Right, we can click OK. We can double click on this, we can come back into it, perhaps just dropping that down slightly and yep, that looks better. So it's all fully adjustable. Making sure we're on the mask, I'm going to come across, I'm going to pick up the move tool. And if we click down, you can see I can actually move that light in around. But more than that, if I use Command T or Control T, that puts the transform tool around it and this will enable me just to bring it in. I'm just going to bring it to that area there so I just want this part of that poppy coming through if we just lift this uh, yeah dropping it down to that area there you can just see an old poppy head there coming behind it I want to keep the lighting in from the direction it's coming through there so yeah just pulling that out a touch or two like that looks pretty good double clicking to apply you'll notice the way the masks move and there it is job done. Let's just take a look and if I just press Alt or Option, that's what we started off with. I'm changing to my hand tool. I'm pressing H on the keyboard. I don't like it when you can actually see the, the framework around there. A little bit distracting. Never mind. There it is. That's the shadow and highlights. Don't forget that's working in conjunction with these. So there it is coming through there. Again, this is adjustable. You can just come to the opacity slider. You can reduce the opacity just to bring it through. You can come to these again, change the opacity. That looks pretty good, I'm happy with that. Double click on this one, that's the setting we put in. Again, we can adjust it, just dropping it down a touch or two. Looks pretty good. And don't forget, the vignette itself is also fully adjustable. It's a great way of working. Love the picture, that sort of, it really does grab your attention now with the red. In the second part, which is going to be for the members area, we're going to take this PSD, what our term has been a master copy, so this we're not going to change, and we're going to reduce it down in size, which will be the copy that I'm actually displaying on the website. So I hope you'll join me in the members area for that. But until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.